Hello, and welcome to another vlog. This week's theme is Autism Spectrum Disorder. I'm going to be releasing a video on Thursday in which I talk more about autism, what it is, what the characteristics of autism are, and what supports are available for people with autism. But today, I want to talk about a number of other autism-related topics. So, I want to start off today's episode with a quote from a man named Stephen M. Shore. He's a professor of special education at Adelphi University, and he is on the spectrum himself. Um, so, according to Stephen Shore, if you've met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism. So, I really like this quote because it really sums up what autism is. Um, it's not as simple as everyone having a disorder that prevent, presents itself in exactly the same way. It's on a spectrum. Um, I personally think about the autism spectrum as like a prism. When you take a prism and you hold it up to a light source, the beam of light splits up into all the colors of the rainbow. So on the one end of the spectrum you have purple light and then on the other end you have red light and in between is infinite color possibilities. Well, the autism spectrum is the same way. You have your two extremes, and then in between, there are an infinite number of ways in which the disorder can present itself. And more often than not, people with autism fall somewhere along the middle part of the spectrum in between the two extremes. Um, so in a sense, autism is not really one disorder, but a series of disorders along a spectrum. And because of that, it affects everybody differently. So with that in mind, I want to talk about some lesser known traits of autism, ones that aren't so commonly talked about. So I'm going to read the list. There's poor and abnormal posture, uh, trouble with left, right, and other directions, disinterest in sports or physical activity, rituals with no outcome, large or unique vocabulary, lack of organization, intense compassion or empathy, intense anger or no anger at all, connections with animals, and a difficulty understanding pop culture, styles, and trends. Now, not everyone with autism is going to show all of these traits, or, or maybe any of them. Um, because like I said, autism affects everyone differently. That, that's why it's a spectrum. But these are some of the less commonly talked about traits of autism, and you may recognize some of them. Um, and then you may not. And what you may notice is that some of these traits are also characteristics that non-autistic people may have. There's a lot of non-autistic people who have trouble with left, right, and other directions, or who might not understand pop culture that well, um, or who aren't that into sports, right? The, the point that I'm trying to make here is that you know, there's no simple definition of what autism is because it affects everyone differently. So next what I want to talk about is something called sensory overlook. So I'm sure if you've ever heard someone talking about autism, you've heard them talk about sensory overlook. Basically what sensory overload is, is it's when your senses get overwhelmed and you become very agitated. Um, this is common in, in people with, with autism, where they might get their senses might get so overwhelmed by external stimuli that they'll go into sensory overload. So a good example of this is a person with autism walking down a busy street. Um, the noises of people talking and, and the construction and, and traffic and all of the other visual and oral stimuli can potentially be overwhelming for them. And that could cause them to go into sensory overload. And people with autism react to sensory overload in different ways. Some people with autism might react by becoming irritable or having a meltdown. Some of them might just shut down and become less responsive um, to someone when they speak to them or, or whatnot, right? Uh, because again, autism affects everyone differently. Um, and it's not just visual and oral stimuli that can cause sensory overload. It, it's any stimuli. Any, any of the senses can be overwhelmed. Um, 
but there are a number of ways to help people with autism avoid sensory overload. Um, I have a list here of strategies from um, an author named Judy Endo, and she's also a clinician for people with autism. And again, she herself has autism. Um, and it's just a list of ways that you can, that non-autistic people can support people with autism to help them avoid sensory overload. So the first item on the list is to proactively address sensory regulation. Um, and then to plan and schedule ahead of time. So it's good to have a detailed list of what your plans for that day are and, and when you're planning on doing them. Um, she also suggests to stop talking because when people with autism go into sensory overload, um, a lot of times they have trouble processing verbal input. Um, so if you talk to them, they might not respond. That could just add more overwhelming. It could just become more overwhelming. So instead, what you can do is you can use alternate communication. This is especially important for people with autism or who are highly verbal. So it's good to have those nonverbal means of communication so that you can communicate with someone with autism while they're having, uh, if they're in sensory overload. Uh, it's also important to use positive reinforcement and to plan and practice exit strategies. And finally, it's helpful to assure social understanding. So by this, what they mean is to help people with autism practice proper social behavior. Um, some people with autism struggle to understand proper social etiquette, uh, but teaching them the proper behavior can make overwhelming situations like that a little bit easier for them. Um, so that's just a list of some of the ways that you can support non-escalating behavior. Um, for people with autism to help prevent sensory overload and other forms of uh, other ways that they may be overwhelmed. Um, so the last thing I want to leave you with is a couple of articles. The first article is from the Chronicle Herald. Um, and it's about a recent report by Autism Nova Scotia and, and the Nova Scotia government basically saying that the Nova Scotia government needs to do more for youth and adults with autism. Um, according to the report, there's a lot of supports in Nova Scotia for uh, preschool aged children with autism, but there's not enough supports in place for older children and adults. And because of that, a lot of them are falling through the cracks. So you can read that article to kind of see what Autism Nova Scotia is suggesting that the government of Nova Scotia does to help solve that problem. And the other article is from Huffington Post. Um, it's talking about virtual classrooms for people with autism. Now this technology was originally designed for people with cancer and other serious illnesses who were unable to attend classes physically because of their illness, um, which allowed them to essentially telecommute it. Well now they're using it for people with autism so that they can telecommute to class. And manage their surroundings in such a way that they avoid sensory overload. Um, and kind of like we talked about earlier. And what they're realizing is that not only is this, you know, obviously really cool technology, but it's helping a lot of these students with autism to excel um, and really helping to improve their quality of life in the classroom. Um, so I'll include a link to both those articles in the description. I encourage you to check them out. Um, I've really just given you a very brief synopsis about what these articles are about, so I encourage you to read them. They're very informative and very interesting. Um, anyway, that's all for today, so thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on Thursday.